Welcome. In this short video, I'll be taking you through perhaps the hardest aspects of the Cambridge IGCSE geography exam, and that's responding to the seven mark case study responses found in paper one. In this video, I'll be taking you through how to respond to the common seven mark responses asked about either an overpopulated or an underpopulated country. And so what we will go through together, the syllabus requirements for this part of the course, a little bit of revision of key geographical theory, using short answer responses to help you structure your seven mark responses, and then giving you a couple of model seven mark responses. So there'll be chapters in this video that you'll be able to use. If you know all about the geographical theory, if you know how to answer short answer responses, and you just want to go straight to the seven marker, please just use the chapters to go forward to those various parts. I recommend how to use this content whilst revising. I would recommend that you play it. Anything you want to make some notes on with your notes out in front of you and all the, any resource you need, pause the video, rewind if necessary, use the chapters that go forward to split to wind on to see how um, something I say in one part of the video applies to another part in the video, and at all times have somewhere to write to make those notes as you go through. But the beauty of this content is that you can pause it, rewind, or even put comments ask me questions if there's anything you don't understand. But this video will not give you an answer to copy, but it will show you the appropriate exam technique. It will give you a way to double check and refine your case study notes and recap on the key tips to gain maximum marks. So the syllabus requires you to show an understanding of overpopulation and underpopulation, in particular the causes and consequences of overpopulation and underpopulation, and you need to have a country for both. So just to recap the assessment one breakdown, it's 105 minutes, the exam, it's 75 marks in total, 45% of your final grade comes from paper one. You're required to do three by 25 mark responses, three by seven mark case study questions, which is roughly 30% of the final grade. And with the three sections, you answer one question from each. So as you all know, section A, it's theme one, question one tends to be any, or it usually, or should be, it has been historically, any or a mix of population theme questions. Question two is any or a mix of settlement theme questions. Where section B, theme two, is any or a mix of themes from 2.1 to 2.5. And question four, is any of the themes not asked from the previous question. And section three, theme three, and likewise, same structure as section B. So let's just go through the theory now about what we mean by an overpopulated and underpopulated country. So an overpopulated country or when there are, there's a huge population, it's more than the population is greater than the amount of resources available to support that country, or that country's population. So really famous examples of Bangladesh and Nigeria. An underpopulated country is when there are huge amounts of resources but very, very few people to use them. And so another famous example would be Canada or Australia. So I have some, some definitions for you. I always like using past exam questions to give you, to help you with the definitions. So underpopulations when there are too few people compared to the available resources for them to use. Whereas an overpopulated country is when there are too many people for the res resources available for them to use. And if you check out this mark scheme, yeah, we have the marks right there confirmed for us. Country size does matter. So, you know, Russia, Canada are huge countries and they seem to be underpopulated. But they also have you know, relatively small populations in comparison to their country. What can, sometimes you could argue that even countries that are huge and have a small, pop, small population, they might not be considered to be underpopulated for various reasons. So, for example, they might not have enough land to actually grow food to support their population or have access to fresh water. There could be other resources that they uh, might not need, they need that they don't have, like woods or trees or whatever to um, use for firewood or um, build houses. You know, it might be an incredibly difficult country to traverse. They might be a very poor country, so they're unable to exploit the resources there. The climate might be too extreme to support large people, numbers of people, and it might be a very mountainous country. So what I'm trying to say is that although country size does matter, the smaller you are, the smaller the country, the likelier you are to be underpopulated. The larger the country, the more likely you are to be over, underpopulated. Sorry, so smaller over, larger under. But there might be other factors at play 
that could actually prevent you from being labelled an overpopulated or an underpopulated country. So factors that lead to overpopulation. Typically, you need to have a very large population. So for that to happen, you need a high population growth rates. So for that, you need a high birth rate, falling death rates. And so what else could be contributed to a high population growth rate is suddenly when you have more people added due to a sudden influx of migrants. So you can think of recent conflicts that have happened since 2015 that have led to some countries becoming massively overpopulated. Other reasons that could lead to a high birth rate are need for workers due to high rates of poverty, lack of family planning due to a variety of reasons, lack of contraception, um, religious or cultural beliefs that encourage families to be large. Falling death rates could also mean that increased food and water supply due to uh, high levels of development, improved levels of sanitation, better access to medication and vaccinations. It could also be a small country as well. So you could be have a high, populated, high population growth rate in a very small country. And so you're, you have a limited amount of resources. Impacts of climate change might make those resources, um, you, know, you might have a very long period of drought, which has sort of made it very difficult to support your population. And indeed, you might have increased development, which means that you are extracting more and more resources from your country to support a more affluent lifestyle. And then factors that lead to underpopulation, well, a fall in the growth rates, which means which is due to a falling birth rate and increase in the death rates. So, for example, migrants are not attracted to migrate to the country. Young population leave for more opportunities. As well, a falling birth rate can be tied to increased use of family planning methods, economic prosperity. You don't need to have more workers in the family. Women form a major part of the workforce, so they delay having children, lower infant mortality rates, social desire to have smaller families, cost of raising a child is expensive. These are all factors and many more that can lead to a falling birth rate. And then increasing death rate could be, and which could then tie into why the country is starting to become underpopulated or going to decline because the fertility rate drops below two for an extended period of time and there's a higher life expectancy. Or you could have loads of valuable resources. Technological developments means that you can have a small population, but you can use technology to exploit the resources or large areas of the air of the country cannot support populations. So let's go through some examples. How does the balance between population and resources differ between a country which is underpopulated and one which is overpopulated? Well, simply an overpopulated country has more people than resources available, whereas an underpopulated country has more resources than people. There we go. So name a country which is underpopulated, Canada, overpopulated, Nigeria. Please also have a range of other examples in case they've already been used as examples. Give reasons why the country you have named in II is underpopulated. So small population size relative to size of country, large amounts of the country are tundra, so large areas of the country are covered in forests. So again, when you have your case studies, make sure you know exactly why they, that country is deemed to be, or reasons why that country is deemed to be under or overpopulated. So here we go, some various reasons why that country can, a country can be deemed to be underpopulated. Explain why some countries become overpopulated. So a country becomes overpopulated when there are too few resources available to support the population. So the definition of what that overpopulated or underpopulated country is. This could be due to very high birth rates because of a need to have large families or a sudden large increase in immigration from a neighbouring country. And you can see all the reasons that can explain why some countries become overpopulated and we've mentioned all of them. So describe four problems which are caused by overpopulation. So again, these questions are really useful when it comes to a seven marker because you can use these mark schemes to help you structure your points and to help you structure and go out and research facts and figures and place specific references to help you write your response. So what I'm going to do is put them on the board and these are all the problems associated with overpopulation. For a seven marker, you need to describe them. There's seven points. You have the seven points there. Make sure you can relate them to your case study. And so again, describe problems faced by countries which are underpopulated. Here they are. Again, for your country which is underpopulated, take these points and apply them to your case study. So make sure you can pause the video, go back and rewind the various parts, pause the video to help you do that. So just to recap, and this is a really interesting question, explain why countries with large areas of land may not be underpopulated. So again, 
I, re I recapped this earlier, so go back and use the chapters to do that. But why could a huge country like Russia or Mongolia or somewhere like that not be considered underpopulated? And so, again, you could have a very low population. There could be a very advanced economy, so it's able to exploit the resources with high amounts of technology. There could generally be a lack of resources available. It could have very high steep relief, so it's difficult to build on or traverse. Lack of habitable lands or maybe a large presence of natural hazards. These are all the various reasons why a large country might be considered underpopulated. And here's the mark scheme. So just bear that in mind. It's worth making some notes now. So remember, small amount of land might not be considered overpopulated. Why? Because highly urbanized, an advanced economy, again, is able to exploit the resources on intensely on a, on a small piece of land, might be able to afford to import all the resources it needs. And for example, if it's able to, if it needs water, it might be able to desalinate to overcome that issue. So, case study questions. And I just want to recap to you, it's not all about numbers. So, key command words in seven mark questions. Describe, explain, justify. And it's worth outlining what they mean, and because the command word dictates to you how you write and how you structure your response. It's also worth remembering that in a question, there can be alternative words. So when you go through past papers, one question might be worded slightly differently, but in essence, it means the same thing. So for example, problems and consequences, they mean the same thing. Whereas impacts, unless it states positive or negative, could mean you could actually write either the positive impacts of something, the negative impacts of something, or you can actually do both. It all depends on the question, but remember, Problems tends to be negative, consequences tends to be negative unless the question says otherwise, whereas impacts, unless it states positive or negative, writes both. So examples of the questions asked um, for seven markers. So this is based on going back uh, all the way to 2016 and I've looked at all the seven markers and I've drawn out common questions. Typically, you need to explain the causes of overpopulation and describe the problems caused by overpopulation. Remember, the same question can work for underpopulation. So you just replace the two. Problems, impacts, and effects are the same unless stated otherwise. Um, and so for described questions, aim for five different points. For five, for explain questions, sorry. For described questions, five different points. For explain questions, aim to explain four points. Now, the mark scheme is really important whenever you're revising to get the points to help you structure. But what's important is understanding what we mean by place specific references, because that's the difference between the level one, the level two and the level three. So place specific references could be named parts of the chosen country. So areas of the north, the south, names of deserts, mountain ranges, etc., and as well as population data. Not just about areas, it could also be the religion, bordering countries, the location of major cities, the name of major cities, types of climate, etc. That is not data specific, that is something that you can just have to, to hand. If you need to get data that you can't find in your notes, or you want to get the latest data, these websites here, and I'll put the links in the comment in the description, video description, are really useful for you to go away and find up to date research. Now, remember, you might not get any data for the end. During a calendar year, is always tricky to get. So any data that says, so for example, if the year is 2023, it will typically be based on data from 2022. And then if it's 2024, it'll be based on the previous year. So just bear that in mind. Or some countries might not publish their data. So the most recent data could be a couple of years uh, ago, regardless of where you are now. So let's look at a potential structure for a question about overpopulation. So remember, we know the causes of overpopulation are high population growth rates, typically due to lack of family planning, the role of women or lack of role of women in society, traditional attitudes, religious beliefs, improvements in healthcare, and or generally things that lead to a resource depletion. So when structuring your point, if you need to get some data to research, these are some of the um, data that you might want to look for through time as well. So again, you can use the resources I've given you. And so leading to a potential structure. You could write something like, name a country is considered overpopulated as the total population is this and has a high population density of this. This is due to many reasons. And what you can do is you go through, you can see I've taken those causes, I've tried to link it to um, data that you've gone away and researched, and I've tried to link it to 
areas of the country as well, or names of religion or things like that as well. So you can see here and pause the video. This is a potential structure that you could use, but again, tailor it to the notes you have in front of you. If you've got any queries, please get in contact. Game problems as well. These are the problems. Remember, go back into the video where I've given you mark schemes of short responses of the general problems that you can tailor to your case study here. So again, suggested data is research. I've given you some here. You might want to go away and research some others. So for example, percentage of forest cover, um, access to clean drinking water, access, high rates of poverty rates, or um, access to foods. Okay, so again, a potential structure. Now remember, it's a described question. So essentially you're listing sentences. So each point needs to be different. So again, here, as you can see, as you go through and you read, I've given a nice sort of structure. I've sort of put it in with applicable facts to my case study, as well as try to go away and um, find the data required. So pause the video, give it a go, use the structure and adapt it to your notes. So it's over to you. So go over your notes and merge what you've learned from this guide. Practice writing responses for underpopulation, causes and consequences. And here's a question that could be useful for you as well with the mark scheme. So in conclusion, short R responses are incredibly useful for seven markers because their points they use are typically something that you can apply to your case study. And it means that you can just go away and find that place specific reference or that population data required. And make sure that with your notes, because you might have started it two years previous to when you did the exam, you get your up, as much up-to-date data as possible. Five points for each describe question, and four points for each explain question, and do practice. If you like this video, if you found it useful, please do um, leave feedback, subscribe, like, um, and share it with your friends if you think they would also find it useful. Thank you for watching.